one. Oh, I totally missed out that I should have shared the other picture here in front. Let me do that again. What's up, legends? Welcome back to a new live stream. It's the third day in a row that I'm doing this live stream. I'm, uh, I'm having the best time right here. And also you guys are keeping me really motivated, inspired, and pretty excited uh, that I get to do this. This is absolutely my honor and privilege. Today we're looking into doing embossed letters, which is this here. It's kind of like creating this beautiful style that was used pretty much uh, a while ago when you were using like a stone and like carving into stone. That's where this style pretty much comes from. I think so, not sure. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm right, who knows? You can go fact check me in a second on Wikipedia if you want to, whatever time you want to. So, great question I have seen here, Redempta from the webinar. All right, so let's see. Um, well, yeah, my name is Stefan Kunz. I'm a hand lettering artist from Zurich and I do these live streams from time to time where I just wanna spend some time with you guys to draw with me. And yes, I have a webinar WhatsApp chat, which means I am usually doing live workshops with people in person, live in my office, in my studio, even here. I was actually having one on April 4th and 5th, and those would have been here in the studio, a Procreate uh, workshop, so Procreate Lettering Bootcamp, and my favorite one as well, the Ultimate Lettering Workshop. Now, because of the virus, I cannot do them, too bad, but maybe this opens a door so that everyone around the world can access to get, get access to these workshops. And so we're launching webinars very soon. And to keep you guys informed, we have the webinar WhatsApp chat to keep you guys informed. We already have like 60 people on the chat and you guys can join in as well whenever you want to. The thing is, it's only limited to about uh, 256 people. So if in case you don't, uh, if you are too late, then it is too late. So sign up right now. The chat is also muted, so only I can send messages. That way you don't get too many bad notifications and so on. But we'll maybe create a group, we'll have a fun time. And also later today, in a couple of hours, in four hours to be exact, I have a Patreon Q&A live session. So we're gonna get all the Patreons on my page to join in on a chat, on a call. I can see your faces, you can see my face, you get to ask me questions directly and tell, ask all everything that is relevant to you right now. For example, how do I deal with this crisis right now? How do I deal with uh, what's ever going on in this world right now? So it's crazy times and crazy times need good answers, need good things that are happening. So this is what we're doing, Q&A live sessions later. The link is also in the description. You'll find everything in the description whenever you need it. And finally, Today, we're starting um, something, we're using these letter builder shades. And since I maybe guessed that not all of you have the letter builder, um, we created this, this, oh man, this one, oh, there we go. Okay, we created this sheet here, um, so you guys can actually download that. It's also right, the first link in the description is that. And you can go download it now, it's free, it's a PDF, you can print it at home, you can use it on your iPad, whatever you need to do. And uh, guys, it's free, why don't you use what's free? And which is cool because you can use that to actually draw stuff on here, kind of like this, and we're gonna use this, I'm gonna use this on my live stream uh, anyway. So, thank you guys so much for joining us on the live stream. I see so many great people in here, Ruthie, Ruth, uh, Laura, Mia, Sarah, uh, Manzel Osman, Osman is, has also been watching this morning. Guys, if any one of you have been watching this morning, let me know in the comments below. What's the hashtag on WhatsApp? Um, uh, what's the number on WhatsApp? So, I don't know what's the number on WhatsApp. You can just join by actually tagging, clicking on the link, it will take you to the, the WhatsApp chat. And we got Lindo coming in. Where are you guys joining in from? I see Indonesia, I see all over the places, everywhere around the world, people are joining. This is amazing. Guys, you are awesome. Stay awesome and hopefully you guys get your piece of paper and your pencils and we're ready to roll, ready to get creative. So again, what I'm teaching you today is how to do this embossed style. And to do that, um, the best way is to start explaining that with a blank piece of paper and to start fresh. Don't you agree? I hope so. 
Uh, I see Dean, I see Shanzai, so many great people. Wow, Dana from Brooklyn, amazing. Okay, so let's jump over to the top view over here, beautiful. Um, so when you're drawing a letter, let's see, it, it works the best, easiest probably with capital letters, um, but it also works with script letter, with any kind of style letter, you can use this embossing style. So embossing is actually, if you have the letter from the top view, this is what you would see, D-E. Now, if we take a little side view, like a little 3D, but with some isometric or fixed angle 3D, this is kind of the view you'd get. Right, that's what we saw in the last, uh, first, uh, first, last week's, last week's live stream, that's what we looked at. Now, if you take the front, top-down view. So this is from the top. Now we're looking from the side here, from the bottom. So you would see this block. Now embossed means that this here would be elevated or in the other way could also be put down, carved into stones. That's where it comes from, carving into stones. So I see there's different options you can do. And now if we take this look from here, just for this part, um, the lower E here, this part would look like this. Or again, if we look into the carving of the stone, it would look like this. So carving of the stone, of course, it would have this here rather than the rest. Um, but here in this case, this is what it would happen. And so we're trying to figure out how to elevate the whole piece, right? We're trying to figure out how to make this look really good. So. This actually happens to go through the middle, through the center line, and so you kind of divide all these spaces, divided by two, and draw like the inline of the letter. When you've done that, that's pretty much the hardest part. Well, the second hardest part. The hardest part is actually then to combine all of these elements here and create these parts there. And so you're trying to connect all of these elements, these uh, corners, and here in the middle, and so on. Now this is really important because that will give you the structure you need to then actually start to color in the bottom part. So I would start then to see that the light is coming from the top and depending which element you need. So if we have A here and we have B here, so in the element of A, we'd color in everything that falls below here and we'll say maybe even the shadow or the sun hits from that side so all of the parts that go in here, those are hit by light. The other parts are a little bit covered by a shadow and that makes it also stand out really well. Like this, right? And these parts there. So in this example, if you have like a square and you divide this into four pieces, you can have the light that comes from the top, then just this part is a little bit um, in the shadow and like maybe more on the top here, kind of like this, right? Or you have the light coming from this side, then you have these two parts that are lit up and this side that will be dark. Or you can um, say that actually the light comes from a different source. From, for example, from the bottom will come up here and then this will be darker. So the same thing happens to here, so you have those four elements. That's usually the case, and it's pretty much the easiest way to think about that. Um, so somebody's asking, which grade of pencil am I using? I'm using a 6B pencil right now. Uh, usually we'll have an HB or 2B pencil, but whatever pencil you feel right about using is the right pencil for you. Um, all right, so this is for this example, now if we have this example here, we start with the same elements. Now let me just hide that a little bit here. Start with that inline, sure to split up into two of these pieces here and then connect all of these elements. Again here, that part, that part, up, down, up, up. I don't know why I said down, but that's the way it is. And now in this part, because it's going inwards, so if the light hits here, then these 
would cast a shadow because it's going down and it's being hidden by uh, the sun here. Okay, that's my, I think my best understanding of what it would look like. Yeah, so it's basically the opposite of this one over here on the left. Um, all right, so if that is clear, so just to recap, maybe better. First, start with the inline. And then you start drawing, you connect all the, um, all the, the corners, connect corners. And finally, you add shadows. So it takes pretty much only three elements to really do that well. And this is basically the theory of how to draw these type of letters. All right, so now we've looked at that. Now let's look at practical, how it looks if we draw specific letters. So I will go jump over to one of my letter builder paces. And now I don't see which one way is up or down, except for this part here. This lower part is a little bit larger than the upper part. And so we'll see this, especially when we use, for example, a B. Now I'm drawing a B. I'm just following these lines here. And then just filling this up inside. And you can see how easy it is to draw your letters. That's why you can use the, 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 the drawing sheet that I added in the description for you guys to use. Um, and so this is really helpful for you to use. Now, the second part again, inline, drawing the inline and trying to split it up the best way you possibly can. And this might be challenging at first, but the more you practice, the better you'll get. Now, connecting all the corners. So these corners here are the easiest one. And now comes a little bit of tricky part. Here we don't have any corners, but what we can do is pretty much split it up in the 45 degree angle. The same thing at the bottom here, maybe at the top here. Also, these will kind of combine here and here those would be these angles that we want to have. Now these will be helping angles and I'll show you how to make that happen and work really well. So I'm gonna, usually the way I do it is I use the sun from the top left side and I'll color in now the bottom here and I'll start fading this out on this side. I'll do the same thing here on the inner right side and color that down in the right side as well here. And then here we'll also have the lower uh, side. And again, suddenly fade it out. Now here I'm gonna also fade it out, but because this is anyway on the right side, I'm gonna actually just fill it up, fill it up, color that in and then start to fade it out on the top here. So what you see is that it starts to fade nicely between these two elements and that will give you a nice gradient. Harsher shadows will be a little bit more complicated to do, but are also really easy and manageable. I, as I see, I forgot to connect that corner at the bottom part here. And so I'll co color that in and uh, fill that out. Now, before I go too far, guys, let me know in the comments which which letter I should do next and fill that out. Which letter I should do after this B. And so now all I am looking into is like, all right, this goes actually higher up and it will fade out here. And this part here is gonna be a little bit highlighted because it's on the top and it will be colored in. 
Lucia is saying it seems easy following you. Well, I hope it is. It should be easy. It's not a difficult exercise to do and we're gonna get a little bit more difficult when we're looking into drawing the full letters. So like doing some uh, script style or something else than just like these types. So I got the first letter. I got the letter M. So the M here is going to be a little bit narrow. But you can see it's really easy to connect that here. All right, now that we have the M, we're just going to again try to split it up in the middle the best we can. like this. Sometimes with the M, what I like to do as well, for example, an A would be this way. Um, so if I did an A on this other side, I'm gonna start that old one already. So splitting that up in the middle here, up here would give me this straight line horizontal line up here, which I would then connect to these pieces, these corners like this, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. So a little bit of erasing here and then connecting these lower parts. So this is why I suggest you guys try the letter builder uh, grids to actually try to draw these letters with ease. Um, it's a great way to practice them and I will show you how you can even do different lettering styles using that one. Um, so, okay, so I'm connecting the corners here as well. This one is a little bit different. Um, here and here and then finally connect that to the middle. And now again, same thing applies, coloring the right uh, side. Here, that is also the right side and lower as well. And then here, lower part two, right side, but still a little bit up. And then right side here. As well. Now let's do the same thing with the A, lower side right side and then lower side over here and finally the right side back here and then also right side here okay so finally the k i feel like somebody was really wishing for a k I'm going in, connecting this here. Now the K is a little bit special because the K will not connect completely here. So a little bit like this on that side. So let's connect that middle part. And then here also middle, middle in line and connect all those corners. And then here we'll have like these pieces. And then finally adding the shadow. So three steps, really easy. Oops, that was a mistake from my side. Whoa. That would be a K. So we got the muck, whatever that would should mean. All right. Um, so this is basically the simple styles that you have that you have to do or can draw. Now let's see if we change the style of the letters. Does it still work? For example, if I use a serif styled E um, or a serif styled F for that matter. Let's see. So we have the stem 
of the F over here. And then we're using here the base. That's where the Ceres is going to be placed. And then I'm actually not, well, maybe I am. No, I'm not. I'm going to actually shorten down the F to this part here. And then in this middle part here. Now, in this case, because it has a high contrast, this letter has a high contrast, um, what I will want to do is to actually just add where the contrast is. So in this part here, um, and then connecting these parts there. Like this, and then start coloring in this and the lower part here, like that. Something like this. Now, of course, we can try that also with the Gothic style letter. Um, let's see if we have a... an N, for example. Like that that would be the gothic style and the same thing applies here with kind of like adding these strokes in the middle and then here being a little bit creative how you want to connect these and then fill it out like this time I want to do the contrast from the other side and what the really cool thing about the whole process here is is that it gives your letters a really nice dimension in your lettering because you're adding shadows you're adding depth you're adding contrast it will give your letters a more depth and style in the whole thing so this is also a great way so now we've done this on different letters now let's do the whole word and let's do a script style word because that one is something that probably most of you will struggle with and to choose whose name I will draw on paper I'm gonna go through my patreon list and I see that uh, some people signed up yesterday so patreon let's see I'm on patreon over here and I see Amanda Woodman joined 27 minutes ago let's see and she is also a $2 exclusive member. I don't know how she did $2, but we'll take it. Um, thank you, Amanda, very much for joining the Patreon and to be a exclusive member on it. All right, so Amanda, again, to do some script, what I do is usually I'll give a baseline and an X height and a little bit of a slant and then give those uh, lines a little bit of direction just so I know a little bit which way it all goes. Maybe that was all too big. That was all too big. Let's uh, get a new piece of paper. Let's see if I still have one. Boom, 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 boom. Let's do a smaller one here like that. All right, so. So this is Amanda in one stroke here. I, I was almost doing the back with the, uh, <laughs> with the, uh, the tap. 
Oh, that reminds me. There's one other trick that I failed to mention to tell you guys about. Um, Laura is saying, I think you can up the dollar amount. Well, the dollar amount actually just brought, gave me another idea that I wanted to tell you guys. So S, drawing S's is usually pretty hard, right? Not really with the letter builder here, eh? So, of course we did this, we did that. But now, what you can also do is do this. This is also a style that you can do. Uh, works pretty much the same. You can do two inlines. You can split it into as many different elements. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm following as close as I can. Keeping the same, same distance as much as possible. So this is the next step. This is how you go to the next level. And what you can do here is then also connect these corners in the same way. And then because it's an S, we're gonna have like the 45 degree angles here and here, and now and here as well, and here as well. So to, to color in the, the lower part, so this is pretty much where, the, where you can kind of like give the angles in and also here. So the lower part would be colored in and the lower right part. And then here it will give like a little fade here as well. And here it will also give a little fade. just a little fade over here. So as you can see, you can give that a whole different texture. So this one will have more of this element on top, uh, maybe more like a divided by three here. Um, and so there's so many different ways that you can do this emboss style and there's not just limited to one inline, something like that, but you can also add all of these elements. And of course, if I start to erase all of these here, that will look a lot better, I think. I hope that makes sense. Sorry that I forgot. Uh, what pens or markers do you recommend? I really recommend to use whatever you feel most comfortable using. I use any pencil. I never really look at the pencils that I use. Um, I know that there are people who really do and hats off to them to know exactly what they want. I'm terrible at that. So here I'm trying to use the same same width, kind of like a monoline style of lettering here for the script style. So keeping that same weight is not as easy, but it's possible. Guys, and if you want me to review your portfolio later on, uh, take a screenshot of your profile on Instagram um, and then share that on your Instagram stories and don't forget to tag me in it so I can see it and then I can actually decide which one I pick later on today just to give like an overview of like what do I feel like is strong, what is what maybe what is a part where you can get challenged, where can I challenge you. Um, because right now you probably have the most time that you'll ever have in a, and sometimes, I hope at least, I do. And so I'm trying new things and I see this, this time right now as a whole opportunity to do something new. So over here we have the whole style and now let's see. Can I 
create something here. Okay, so one thing that I struggle at the moment with is how to connect this A. How to make a beautiful A. All right, maybe something like that. Okay, so now I'm just gonna erase some of the lines because it will get a little bit messy later on. That's why that's why I really love to draw on the iPad. But since most of you guys don't well maybe you, most of you have an iPad, I don't even know. We should have like a poll asking people who use an iPad and who don't. Does a portfolio review have to be of just lettering pieces? I have a mix of line drawings and lettering on mine. Absolutely. Like, I'm not sure I'd be the best qualified to, to review that, but whatever you want me to review, you can share that. I'd love to have a look. Um, also, I can just review Instagram-wise what makes sense, what should you focus on, maybe how can you improve your feed, um, give you like a whole uh, review on that as well. All right, so now that we have the outline, so this is pretty much what we want, is to have the outlines. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. What I want now is to draw the inlines again. So first step, inlines, and I'm just gonna keep it the way I showed you before. So it's a little bit tricky here, especially when these lines don't really come together nicely. like that. And as soon as we've done that, what it is that we have to do, that's right, we have to connect all the corners. Okay, that is my first attempt here. 
it looks a little bit messy, of course. Uh, what I'm going to get is to get a couple of pens, of colored pens, that I want to use um, and to make that look beautiful. So, Elise, yeah, it looks easy when Stefan is doing it. Oh, my bad. Really, draw the outlines, connect, draw the inline, connect the corners, and then draw in the shadows. That is the basic thing. Then after that, it comes down to practice and to, to make that work really well. Can we tag you Instagram like inspired with? Absolutely, Lindo, always enjoy being tagged in something and seeing what you guys are doing. All right, let me go grab some pens. <laughs> There we go. Now it's only how to pick which one out. Um, this could look really well. This could also look good together with this, maybe. Is there a lighter blue? I'm not sure if there's a lighter blue than these two. What do you think, blue? Or should I go more with red, dark red, and then black eventually? Hmm, that is the question. So, if you're not sure, what you can do is also just test it out. That's a great way to start doing that too. So let's see, we have a, let's see, we have an E. If you really want to do it the precise way, I actually even suggest of using multiple colors, like up to four colors to create the style. So because every side will have a little bit of different gradients, but two is already well enough. Like this. And now I can see how this would work. So we have the top one. I hope it doesn't bleed onto the other side of the page. Actually, it looks pretty legit. What happens if we actually add one more color onto that? Actually, it's nice too, but we could also just add that here. That would actually not make enough of a difference. So if you wanted to add a 3D, probably would have to use black. And then the other idea would be to use this light blue. blue you know what I really enjoy the blue no actually the the pink one a lot better and with Amanda I feel like it fits really well so we're going for red all right I got enough here to do that so perfect in case these go out Boom, 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 boom. Calligraphy Masters in. Aw, oh, man. 
So good to see you. Stefan is my favorite lettering YouTuber. Of course, I'm here. But thank you so much for joining. I'm excited you're here and spending the afternoon. All right, let's see. Um, let's start coloring this one in. So top, I'm starting with the lighter color because the lighter color is the one that you can make mistakes with. If you're using the darker color first, it will be a lot more difficult. So again, just the top parts. And when I say just, it is complicated to keep track, to not forget. And to fill in the wrong ones. These could actually make some really cool drawing, uh, coloring pages, if you think about it. Still making sure that everything is correct. So I told people this story this morning in the live chat or in the live stream. Um, now I gotta be careful because I have to concentrate. But I was telling them about the love story between me and lettering. Because the way I got into hand lettering wasn't the normal way uh, that people think it is. It was love at first sight, that I just jumped to lettering and I knew exactly that that would be my profession till the end of my life. You know, kind of like romantic stories. That wasn't it at all. And uh, it was actually, we're like best friends. Super close. Uh, we enjoyed the company. We enjoyed spending time together. But I never thought more of lettering than it was. Just a hobby. And um, it was a fun time. I, I really enjoyed the time. But again, like I said, I never thought more of it uh, than that. And so the years progressed, I was more interested in photography, more interested in other professions, other jobs. And uh, it took me a while until like, I realized like, man, I actually should consider being more serious about lettering and doing this more full time. So yeah, in uh, 2017, 
I committed to the relationship and it became the best friendship, relationship, love story, <laughs> uh, <laughs> however you want to see it, um, that I could have imagined. And so it was really fun. All right, I think I got most of that, except for this one here. All right, now I can start doing the other side, the red part. And um, so, yeah, I say whenever people are telling me about like, oh, you know what, I don't know what I should be doing, then usually whatever you're doing right now is the best sense. Like, especially now when you're not sure of what you're doing, like not really enjoying what you're doing, um, like you hate going to your job. Maybe now it's easier because you can stay at home. But, yeah. So for me, it was after committing really to this, to this one thing, it became really clear to me that I wanted to do that more. And I was really pursuing this. And so I already had a couple of jobs that were coming in. I, I, it was working already, so I could really making the decision was a lot easier, but it was like, like it's, it's with your best friends, you're like, ah, you know what, like I don't wanna jeopardize it, I don't wanna lose it, like I don't wanna lose my hobby for my, um, like and, and make it a profession, like I just wanna keep my hobby and I totally get that. Um, and maybe there are other things that are just more interesting right now, like you wanna get to know other people in that sense. Um, so yeah. There are a lot of similarities between that story and the one of lettering and, and just relationships in general. Like the best relationship that you'll ever have is the one to the person you commit to. Like not just marriage, but just people that you decide like, this is a friend, this is someone that I want to commit to. It's a great thing and it will actually really take you further than anything else. Some life advice. <clears throat> by Stefan Kunz. I'm also trying to think of fun stories. Uh, somebody asked me, like, what are some fun facts about you? So that was actually Katrin... Katrin, who went, who came to my workshop in uh, Zurich, the the first, actually the very first workshop in Zurich, um, she asked me like, tell me fun, five, or three or five fun facts about yourself. Now, number one is probably is that I was actually a little bit obese, so uh, I actually lost a lot of weight when I was um, 18, like 10 years ago, which makes me 20. Uh, eight, I was saying like 20, 10 years ago, 20, nope, uh, makes me 28, but yeah, 10 years ago, I lost over 25 kilos, or over 20 kilos, I was over 100 kilos uh, heavy, so there's a, a fun fact here. Another one was that one of my very first memories of a job that I wanted to do, a profession that I wanted to do was being actually a, um, a train conductor. So I, I, I love trains, I was super fascinated by them. And only recently I actually got to, to be on a train. One of my friends from my small group, he, um, this is a small group that we meet from church, he actually asked me, like he's a train conductor and he asked me to, to come and, and like uh, join him on, on, on a day and true rise and that was amazing. Got to see so much. And what else? Oh yeah, I was a banker. I was a Swiss um, banker. Became a certified, um, certified Swiss banker. And no, we do not hide money, or at least I would know. We have pretty strict rules of with that account to money. And yeah, I was a photographer for a long time as well. I wanted to open a cafe, 
Uh, that was also something. I actually do latte art longer than I have been doing. Um, been doing lettering. So yeah, and I only moved into this studio about six months ago, or a little bit longer now, maybe nine months ago. Um, in J August, J August, in August of 2019. And I was really nervous about doing this step. So if you're an artist who is thinking of maybe moving into a studio, it's actually a really great step. It's such a blessing to be in a space where you can create, uh, where you can work and then separate that from, from your home. That is such a great thing uh, really to have. But it is a costing point and you gotta weigh out the costs. Um, and I only did that now in the third year, I think, of my, of being independent. And before I actually wanted to change it up and uh, to, to ask other people to join in. Um, so kind of like a co-work, but then fast enough, I hired someone and just realized it's, it's great, especially when I do live streams and stuff like that, to have the, the dedicated space for me to do all of these things. All right, we're almost at the end here. A looks really complicated. Yes, it does look a little bit more complicated because it has all these smaller parts in here. And this is all because it's so close together on a small scale. Like if you could zoom in, on an iPad, for example, there's so much more you could do. So that is here for the A. I might actually change these to this roundness. Actually might use that darker shade to color in these lower parts. Now I wanted to see if that works. Ooh, it does work. So if you use a darker pen and you start to draw on the other pen, use that to do kind of like shades. It does look pretty epic and you can get like even more, more complex. colors as it appears. So what I'm using here is actually, well, I'm too far down. I'm calling that in and then Well, you know me guys, never happy with just leaving as is, always adding one more step to whatever I do. Everyone who comes to my workshops knows that.
All right, and I think you could even do that with the other one. Giving you that a little bit nicer gradients here. Something like that, and if I had some whites, let's see, do I have some whites? Um, maybe not, but what I do have in white is I actually have chalk. I do have chalk, and chalk works great. So, let's see, there. So just some chalk here, to kind of give some highlights. Something like that. And of course, you can add some 3D if you wanted to, but there is a time when you just have to move on and keep on going because we've been doing this already for an hour, but look at what we've learned already in an hour. You could also just erase all of that. those guidelines, those pencil lines. I just gotta be careful that I just don't take off all the, um, the chalk that I just drew on, which maybe I should have done later. Now, last but not least, probably something you should be doing at the end is to also just give it a nice outline.
just filling out some gaps down here that I missed. that I kind of could do a little bit better, like here. All right, so you see 3D embossing looks fantastic. And uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed this part. Oh, I might have missed some parts here up top as well. Um, so yeah, this is 3D embossing and uh, we got here Amanda on the screen and I'm really excited, look at that. So now all I have to do is to sign that one and then we can find a way to send that to Amanda, to one of my Patreons. Super excited. Um, never knew or thought that I would have any Patreons, but hey, here we are. It's uh, 2020. We got, we're in March and I'm excited and just gonna have to drink a little bit more. So we created these here. Um, I showed you how to do start with this with the the B, then the M, the A, the K, the Bimak. That's the Bimak method. Um, that you can also do it with different styles. For example, in um, uh, serifs, Gothic letters, or also the other style that we showed. You can go back in the video later on as well. And finally. The method really is draw the outlines. Usually um, thick mono lines work best. And then make sure that one, you start off with the inline. You go in to connect all the corners and then finally add the shadows and you select your light source. Where does the light come from? For example, in this case here, the light comes from outside, out of my window mostly. And I have this light over here and that just fills in a little bit of the shadows. And that helps me to do that. If you want, you can get this uh, awesome page, the uh, letter builder uh, page. Man, I am having a trouble time here. You can have the letter builder uh, drawing sheets also available for free. You can get that down in the description. And uh, look, I'm just blending too many things in. So that is that. What's a reference of those Stabilo markers? So these are Stabilo's first brush pens, which are amazing. They're the Pen 68 brush pens. So let me see, uh, top down, boom. Let's see, can I focus that in? No, that is not focused. Stabilo Pen 68 brush. So those are great. They have a brush tip and they're great to color it out and you see, I always make my hands full with the colors. Uh, so that's a little bit annoying. Now, could you modify the Hamilton logo? I'm not sure which one is the Hamilton logo, but what I guys, what I promise you guys today is that I would do also a review of some uh, portfolios and to see that. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna look through a couple of those and then I'm gonna export them to uh, take a screenshot I'm not sure if I can connect my phone. I don't think I can connect my phone yet. Um, 
but I might do that. Maybe I'll try to see if that works. So, so we got a couple of portfolios. Oh, I see that Frau Hölle is in the looking inside and wow, she says it's really professional the way I do it. Pretty amazing. Thank you. If you're still watching, thank you very much. Um, let's see. We had one here that I wanted to pick out. Katrin Nina, she sent me a beautiful um, video of her thing. So let's go down to the top down. Let's see. Can you see that? Okay. So she sent me this and asked me to please review my portfolio. So we're going on Katrina Nina's portfolio and we're looking at her. She, she came to my workshop uh, at the beginning of the year, last year. No. Yeah, the first, very first workshop. So I'm not sure if you guys can see that really well. Maybe I have to get out my um, iPad. Maybe that will work a lot better. Um, all right, let's see. Cancel. Let's go to a web browser and then tap in Instagram. And let's see what we can get here. So what's her handle? It is... Katrin underscore Nina and underscore creative. Let's see if I type that in right. If I did, everything should be well. Okay, here we go. She has 5,388 followers. Um, first off, what I look at is always Pretty much the overview. So see what does it say? Katrinina Vinko, all around creative, hand lettering and color addict. So that's great. I already have a great idea of what she does. I love that it's gonna be colorful. So I'm expecting from that, from just seeing, reading this here, that her feed should be really creative. Also, she has her email right in the first lines and she only uses two lines, which is amazing. This is perfect. The less lines you have, the better it is. Now, I can see she has a couple of stories. I think she could fill that out a little bit more. So first off, I think you could do that as well um, to add a more some more highlights to your stories. Um, but then again, color addict, I'm seeing that. I'm seeing a lot of gray though around, which kind of focuses in really well on the picture itself. I love that it's a lot of pens that you see that she's using pens. Um, unfortunately, I don't see any open pens, kind of like the hand, maybe you want to show that it's drawn by hand. You don't want to just show that it's drawn with pens, but by hand. So using a pen and something in the hand. So if I go to my um, Instagram, Stefan Kunz here, for example, this is how I track my uh, things. Um, what I like to do is kind of like show that in, like here's my hand inside, there I am in my underwear, stuff that you do from time to time. Um, who else we have here? We see my hand is in a lot of those pieces. Those are especially videos. But even here on this picture, you would see my hand inside. So you see kind of that it is drawn by hand. And so I kind of would like take like this here. I probably would place a couple of pens around, which is what she's doing really well. Uh, maybe leave one open, just like caps and stuff. Um, what I do often is I get these rests in here, these um, shredded um, paper, uh, pencil um, things, and I will we'll put that out here somewhere, and I'll try to fill the image as best as I can, and then finally we'll have something, um, maybe have a pencil here, what else? Uh, some black pen, I don't know, like this, and then kind of like that. Um, also just finding something to fill out here maybe, um, and then kind of like dropping that in. That would be the my solution of doing something. Um, that can actually be really helpful and take a great picture. So this is a top-down picture. It's great for your Instagram, uh, works really great. Usually has a great reaction to people who look at that. So this is what I would do. So going back, um, really love that she's really colorful. Again, that's beautiful. She does a lot of beautiful mixes of colors um, and one thing that I noticed straight away is that her uh, lettering style, her brush lettering is pretty much the same everywhere. And since I had her in my workshop, I'm gonna be challenging her to actually move out of that. 
start to create more uh, refined brush calligraphy or some more strict calligraphy. Like these are all a little bit bouncy, those, I say, those girly uh, scripts. And it's fun for a while. It's usually drawn in one go. And I think I challenged her back then as well. And um, this is really something that you can practice. It's going more and even, I'm not saying that this is the only style you should go for. No, you should try out different styles. You should try, uh, see how this works. But again, you see, this is all in one line, maybe a little bit slanted or a little bit here. Maybe I should have kept it straight, but that way she can style, try different styles and then combine it with what she learned in here. Like she's adding beautiful highlights on the sides. And I, I love to see more of refined uh, font styles, kind of like here. I love the support that she's adding here. She's adding those outlines. Um, she has a form, so I, I hope that she learned that from my workshop as well, from the um, the, port, uh, the the composition masterclass where she puts that well in the space, uh, uses kind of like these sizes here. And so in that sense here, what I would do, nope, I don't want you Siri, don't you Siri. Um, if I take a screenshot, now I can draw on it. This is the perfect thing. Uh, what I would do is to kind of like keep these, this here on a line and this here on a line. So it would kind of look more like if I maybe go back to a different color, like home and stay. And then you can like still fill this out here, but now you have more space in between here. You can still draw the S lower and then have the enough space down here. But if you're doing these uh, bouncy styles back and forth, um, then this is not really going to help you grow or like you want to learn more styles and try out more refined specific styles. So I hope that this will help you uh, do something. What else? From all of these pictures, the first thing that I see is this one here. Um, and this one, it's, it's great that she's doing videos. It's great that she's doing Instagram live videos or Instagram TV videos. Woman brush lettering. So she's showing how she's doing women in eight different styles. The thing that kind of like throws me off is that all of these look really great alike, except for just this one here. So that's where I probably would add a little bit more flair to it or at least place it in an environment kind of like this one here to, to just make it look more. Like even if you record a video, try to record in the same style. That absolutely works. And um, finally, I love that how she presents her pieces. I love the colors. I love that she's just adding those styles. So definitely keep on using those styles. And even if it's an iPad version like this one here where she drew it probably on the iPad, uh, try to maybe like take a picture, put it on there on a piece of blank picture. So that's what I've done. I would usually take a blank photo of a blank photo and then add um, the piece that I drew on the iPad in here. So if you look at that, for example, the one that I did yesterday, I kind of did exactly that. I posted that with this here that I drew on the iPad. So that is a fun way to do it. All right, who else do we have? We have someone more, uh, let's see. We have someone here who's looking into the chats. Oh, we got someone here, Letter die einen. So German and let's see what she has. Okay, um, I'm gonna add this here and see if I can type that back in. All these underscores. If you're choosing a handle name, the best way to choose a handle name is actually to choose something that is really easy to spell, too easy to, to find. Um, the shorter, the better, and the easiest pronounce, the better as well. Okay, we have here Letter die Einen, German, which says about uh, draw, like letter, you use something. Um, and she, uh, I'm, the first thing that I noticed is that her name is not in there. There's no, um, that kind of doesn't create the personality. I would really enjoy adding your personality. If you're a person, add your name. That creates a connection, a personality to it. So adding here your name would be really great if you don't already have that in here. 
um, hand and brush lettering from Regensburg, so it's cool you know where she's from. She does workshops, live letterings, events, and individual uh, custom uh, uh, commissions. And her, has her email as well. And she even has put down her hashtag, which is great. So you see, she has a hashtag. And so whenever you know, kind of like you want to get her attention, you can use that hashtag. That really works really well. Then I see that she's doing a lot with pencils. She also does something digital. So I like that she's trying different styles. Um, here, pretty much the same idea as well. Try to draw your lettering more um, with the outlines instead of just with a brush. Um, so one of the first things I noticed here, for example, this one is all these pieces probably are all drawn with the pressure of the brush. Um, here, the same thing as well. It's like adding the stroke, thick stroke, down stroke, and so on, and combining that instead of drawing out all these nice elements. Could be also drawn, but usually this This here, this roundness, let's see if I can, being this round here, like having this shape, shows me that it is a brush because the brush pressure would usually create exactly that shape and so that's why it will usually have that form. And what I'm saying about not using the brush pressure to draw is that if you use just the outlines, I can actually control better how my letters should look like and so that's the difference between lettering and calligraphy. What she is doing at the moment more is calligraphy and, and just or writing. I like, I'm, I started reading this book. This is a brand new book that is about to come out by Ken Barber. Uh, it's a beautiful lettering manual. And he is differentiating that in actually his, um, his book here, the difference between Let's see, where do we have it? Um, there's the intro case studies, but he talks about lettering here, writing, typography, and lettering. Typography, writing, lettering. Writing is the primary parts of written letter forms are made with a single pass of the writing instrument. So in this case here, what she's done is she's done one writing script like she just did one pass of the writing a single pass of writing so she didn't go over like she did go over to add some elements but like these here most of them are made with one stroke except for this one and i love this one i really love and i absolutely would recommend her to do more of these if she can and go on and actually practice that so this is also a great way and I said I would do a third and one of my good fans here, Jonathan Jenkins, is in the chat. So I'm going to be, be taking him. He's also a Patreon bearded and underscore fan. Um, here we go. So of course he has a lot of similarities with some of my work. For example, this one here, I feel like this is a pre-composed grid that he used. I'm not sure if he did, maybe he's, ah oh yeah, see, using the pre-composed Bible grid from Stefan Kuhn, seek to do what is right and to live humbly. So automatically, I already love that. I love how he actually transformed that and he uses that. Um, I see that he's doing all great things here. Florida, for example, I like the ligatures. Combining here, the floor is going out. Um, something easily improved fast is, for example, the, the legibility of each letter. Um, and the readability is also kind of the flow, how fast you can read through it. So here you automatically can read F, L, O, but the R is a little bit kind of like misplaced in here. So maybe adding more space in between the O and the I, just like space it out and add the R, like if I would, Add the R, take a screenshot of this. If I would take the R, my R would probably be more like, so O and R, and not O and, oops, R, or like R, kind of like this. Like you can still do an O and the R like this, but I feel like here it definitely needs to be attached and detached, so have these two elements in that. I hope that you agree. Um, 
And then other things are just like consistency, flowing like the thickness of those strokes in between. So you have two thickness of strokes. You have the thick one and you have the thin one. And so make sure that these two are very consistent in your lettering. So here, this is pretty much all the same thickness, except here it gets a lot thicker. Here it's a lot thicker, but here it's a lot thinner. So we have maybe how many styles of thickness do we have? We have one here, we have one big here. Um, there's a difference between those two. So if we take this here and this here, those are already different. Um, there's another one here, another big one here. And so you see the consistency of those strokes should be all equal. So that's also something that you can look for in your lettering to improve that and, and maybe really try to use a grid. And I feel like your strokes are actually really straight in that regard. And yeah, they look pretty straight to me. So that's just a test to see if they're consistent and perpendicular to all of them, each other. Um, another one, which one could it be? Let's see, I like the shadows, kind of the, the depths. I feel like you can definitely do go in more with these parts here. So adding more shadows, more elements, um, but necessarily dive deeper into how they actually react with each other. So that's also a great way to practice that. And I like that you are adding your, are these your best nines here? Here's my top nine from 2019. I love it. I love the, the elevated do not be anxious part here. I don't know if you've used a other screen like to, to do the shadow and balance, um, but they all look really great. Great work on these. Um, yeah, like I really like this, this shadow part here and how you cross them over. So great ribbon lettering on this one. Um, also consistency wise, um, they do flow somehow together, but they have some inconsistencies in here's a, a plain background. Then you have some colors, you have some, some very uh, colorful ones as well. Um, so I kind of would try to find like, which one do you like most? Like I, my color palette would usually always drop in the same element. So for example, it's usually um, white and something other, and then sometimes it will have some dashes of color, but not too much. I try not too much, but my, my whole feed is a mess. So there's nothing really combining each other. So yeah, there you have it. I hope that you learned something new from this. Um, I really enjoyed you guys here on the web, on the live stream. I hope you learned something new. If you wanna join the live stream Q&A, the Q&A that I'm doing with my Patreons, you can go into the Patreon link that is in the description and get access to that and we'll send you a link to the Zoom uh, webinar that we'll have later on, the, web, the Zoom stream meeting, whatever it is. And I'm gonna be answering all of your uh, questions and hopefully see everything that I can help you, especially right now in this time where it's all crazy, but it's all good. Don't forget that it's all going to be okay. And we're not going to have too much trouble. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you had a great time. Don't forget to share what you created with me on Instagram, share it with others. If you find that helpful, it would help me a lot. If you share this video with your friends on Facebook, on Instagram, wherever you feel like it and uh, subscribing also helps to just like help you bring these videos to you closer. And I'm excited for next week. I have a couple of things to do next week, but I want to do some more streams as well. And every idea is welcome, what I can do to help you guys. So I'm really excited about that. I hope that you are too. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, yes, see you next week guys next week check out my instagram when you want to see more or turn on the bell if you uh, don't want to miss anyone all right have a great weekend guys and stay be creative and don't freak out that's the most important part bye